Chapter 4, The Famine Ends. Clever Queen's new mother was just as kind as kind could be. Oh, how she loved her new baby and cuddled her. And although I am sure little Clever Queen missed her own mother, with plenty to drink, she at once became happy and contented. They stole my pretty diamond. They were horrible and mean. But I've got another darling, and her name is Clever Queen. The new mother sang as she swung the child to sleep in the hammock so that she could cook the evening meal. We offered them chickens. They were horrible and mean. Yes, they stole my pretty diamond, but they'll not get Clever Queen. But away up in the village where the famine was, Clever Queen's sad-hearted mother was singing a prayer. Good spirit of forest and water, go follow my dear little daughter. She's the best that ever was seen. Oh, care for my own little clever queen. We sold her for two bags of rice, but she's not gone away to stay. When her father has sold his bamboos, we'll buy her back some day. And all this time, the baby's own grandpa and father were cutting their bamboos way up in the mountains. They dragged them ten at a time to a little creek and then tied five bundles together, making fifty in a large bundle. These they floated down to the big river and hid them among the bushes. In this way, they worked until they had two thousand bamboos all tied in bundles of fifty. They had to float them down the river to the city before they could sell them. So when at last they had sold their bamboos and were ready to come back to their village, several months had passed away. The dismal rainy season was gone, and with it the flood. In other districts, the rice was already reaped, and there were signs of a plentiful harvest. So what did it matter now? They had money. They could buy rice. They could buy enough for Grandma and Mother and Clever Queen. If, if they were still alive, the dreadful thought made them hasten. Well, they knew that famines are terrible things. But they knew that Grandma was very old and very wise, and they hoped that she had been able to find a way out. So silently they hastened on through the jungle, staying only long enough to get a little sleep and something to eat. And one evening before the sun was set, they came to their own house. Grandma was downstairs pounding Patty. She stopped a moment and opened her mouth in surprise. But she spoke no word as she saw the men come into the house. The devil worshippers dare not show their happiness for fear that the spirits may visit their displeasure on some loved one. Upstairs, too, Clever Queen's mother stopped cooking rice only long enough to be sure who those two men coming into the house were. And then, as though they had not been away only for a day, she went on with their work without a word. The men threw their bundles of clothes and bedding to the floor, walked over to the water pot, washed their feet and hands, and then only asked, Is the rice cooked? All cooked was the answer. And while his wife dished up the rice, Clever Queen's father looked into the bedroom to see if his little daughter was still there. Not finding her anywhere in the house, he concluded that she was dead, and though it made him very sad, he dared not say anything about it. To talk about it would only make him sadder. His wife, now realizing that they had money and that the famine would mean nothing more to them, was ashamed to think that she had sold her baby and dared not say anything, so they ate in silence. By and by, sitting by the fire at night, he asked, You have rice? Plenty for several weeks, his wife replied. 
How come? he continued. Pigs, was the reply. But have you money? whispered the wife. Plenty. But lots of it. Why all these questions? Do you not fear that someone will hear? Nay, I fear nothing. Only I hope that you have enough money to buy back our clever queen. Buy back our clever queen was all that he said, but he understood. And standing up, he walked out into the night. How sorry we feel for the poor people in the jungle who are afraid to be happy and afraid to be sad and who live in fear of the devils. Do you suppose that as Clever Queen's father walked around that night, he decided to buy her back?